Hello, welcome to Kugelworks. Today, I'm gonna to install this pair of our underdash speaker panels in this 1600. And I've wanted to make this video for some time now. Although it is a direct replacement for the factory underdash panels, there are a couple little tricks that I'd like to walk you through. This is everything that should come shipped in the box with your speaker panel set. If you purchased it uh, with speakers, um, It'll come with them installed, uh, driver side panel, the uh, lower under dash panel for the passenger side, and the passenger side speaker panel, along with uh, hardware and info packet wiring. Let's open this up and get the hardware out, as well as the wiring. Um, Hopefully your car has factory underdash panels in it and you are removing them, which will give you a pretty good idea of how these will fit. If you have no panels and no parts and no hardware, the hardware pack should provide enough of the U-nuts to place in the firewall locations that will uh, mount the back flange of the underdash panels. So you should have uh, 10 of the shorter screws that will go in all of the locations other than the two longer screws that will go into the lower steering column uh, U mount at the bottom of the underdash panel on the driver's side. These are some of the tools that we're going to be using for the installation today. Uh, a small drill driver. I prefer uh, using a drill driver over an impact driver for more lightweight um, interior stuff, a little more delicate. Um, pilot drill, uh, eighth inch uh, step drill bit. We're only going to be drilling a couple holes and they will be in the plastic panels. Nowhere in the interior uh, or the body of the car will we be drilling for the installation. Um, an assortment of Phillips screwdrivers number two, um, kind of typical stuff. Um, you can get most of it all done with a little ratcheting driver like this, but um, you may want a narrower or longer uh, thin shank style for getting through the couple back holes that go into the flange. They're a little tight. Um, an awl or a pick tool. Uh, this is good for helping to find the U-nuts and aligning stuff as you're getting all the mounting points dialed in. A small plastic pry tool, um, sometimes that's good as well for adjusting things without marring any uh, plastic surfaces. And I've got a measuring tool here, but you shouldn't need it. This will all uh, fall into the factory hardware locations. First thing we're going to want to do is remove the speakers from the panels because we'll be installing the panels without the speakers. And then the last thing we'll do is put the speakers back into the panels. We've got our speakers out of the panels now and they're a lot lighter and easier to work with as we install them. Um, I've got an awl and a couple of screwdrivers as well as the appropriate screws. Um, remember the two longer ones will go under the column and uh, we'll put the driver side in first. So I've cleared some space, slid the seat all the way back and put an ealing pad down because I will be spending quite a bit of time here. Um, I've also removed the factory underdash panels. Hopefully you've already done that or possibly your car uh, never had them in the first place. Um, also, we won't get into wiring the stereo itself today, although it's pretty straightforward. We have routed wires from the center console up over the column and dropped down on the side uh, of the column here. Same with the other passenger side on the, the right of the glove box door. Um, I also have a small flashlight. Uh, good lighting is key through all of this. It'll allow you to have a pleasant experience during your install. So you will remove 
this under column pad and it will go back on after we do the speaker panel install. Um, you'll see the mounting locations. This tang in the corner of the dash should have a unit on it, factory, um, as well as another location on the firewall. It's covered by carpet in this car, but um, this will have a little sheet metal tab and another U-nut as well. If the U-nuts are not there, you'll use the ones provided in the hardware pack. Also, this bracket that is clamped to the column at the lower location, it will receive the two longer screws and it's a little bit of a fuss to get to fit. That's why we'll want to use the awl um, to feed up through the panel and find those holes because they're they're buried once you put the, the panel on. Before I fit the panel in place, I'll pop a hole at the bottom corner of the foam baffle and that'll be to both feed my wiring through as well as screw the final screw into the back flange. So getting that up and into the, the panel first. Then um, I'll come down and I just want to get this part of the panel and these U-nuts underneath this column there, hooking that, and then I'll concentrate my effort into this slot that's designed to clear the heater control uh, cable and then over here to where uh, I've got the uh, hood release. Um, and, and I just need to be able to clear the hood release and bring up this corner screw into location. You'll push the whole panel up and it'll pretty much bottom out to where it wants to fit. And then we can put the first screw into this corner here in, at the upper left. With my long thin shank screwdriver, I will access the back flange bolt by inserting it into the speaker hole and it comes through this small hole at the back that has a grommet in it and you can see how I'm going to access that back flange location. Once I get one of my short mounting screws, I can install it through the hole, then get my screwdriver, it's going to happen, onto here, and insert into the U-nut in the firewall, like so. Snug it down. Good to go. Now I'm ready to install the speaker and fasten uh, any of the other hardware. These screws under the column will get tightened into those U-nuts. I'll uh, install the wiring terminals to the, to the speaker. And once installed, we'll clock the logo so that it's pointed down and appropriate to uh, look good. We've moved on to the passenger side where we've routed the speaker wire up into the right hand side of the dash and then located the tabs coming off of the lower portion of the dash in the corner where there's factory units and on the firewall where we have the tabs coming off with units as well. Um, we set up our panel to install and punched the same hole at the lower portion that corresponds with this access to the, the hardware that will go on the flange. And then a dry fit up into place, not forgetting to route your speaker wire through the baffle. Getting that fit up, I'll use the awl again to locate the U-nut and start installing the screws. So this back panel is not real important to the integrity of the installation. 
uh, but it does hold this heater um, hose up, kind of hides it, and and finishes out the whole installation. Now, the width of all of this and this unit location on the heater blower assembly changes from car to car, so I've left this hole missing from, from the kit. And it gives you the option to slide it further back or forward, depending on how much firewall insulation padding you have in the carpet. So you do have some options, but essentially this will get drilled pretty much dead center of that panel. It allows you to push it back and, and mark that where you want it. This side has a U-nut installed, and it will get drilled in the bottom corner of your pod, depending on the width of the whole assembly, because the pod can get pushed out from the from the insulation on the carpet of the kick panel as well. This is the last part of the install and it allows you to get a nice snug fit without fighting uh, pre-drilled holes. So I've drilled this hole in the left side of this flange and the corresponding hole in the speaker panel. We hook the right side under so the U-nut is behind and bottom this out against the firewall installing this screwdriver is a little too long for that one but it's perfect for this screw wiggling that around to find that and snugging it up next all I do is install the wiring terminals and clock my speaker grill so that it lines up with the driver's side and looks correct. As you can see, the clearance with my size 12 work boot on the clutch provides ample room and plenty of room as a dead pedal. Um, Clearances is not an issue.